I want to thank you, Code Talker. Your pinpointing the cause of the vocal cord parasite's mutation enabled us to purge an enemy from Mother Base. You mean that scientist? Yeah, I was convinced he betrayed us, but I was wrong. He was never on our side to begin with. So ultimately, there was no traitor among us. And yet I made everyone distrustful with my talk of spies. The end result being men turning on each other in the laboratory. You must not blame yourself. They were all infected with the mutated strain. The outcome would have been the same. You know, we defeated Skullface, but it didn't lessen our pain. It's a pain we'll never be rid of. I see that now, but I thought I could burn it away. In the end, all I burned was our own men. Infectious diseases, parasites. Without such foreign enemies, the immune system will start attacking the body, developing allergies and autoimmune diseases. The same is true of organizations. You're right. But I do not deserve to rebuke you. My desire to retaliate against the English language is what attracted me to the vocal cord parasites in the first place. Had it not been for that, I would never have been used by Scarface. We both allowed revenge to crawl into our minds and lay its eggs. Sotilanthropus will unleash that thirst unto the future. How long are we going to be tormented by what he left behind? There is no choice but to live with that pain. Be symbiotic with our vengeful nature. Whatever we do. We must not allow that thirst for revenge. Quiet should be around there somewhere. Analysis complete. even expected me to write the lyrics. He even said he had thought of the title already. Love Deterrence. As if he had done the hard part. Deterrence? Love Deterrence? Deterrence is... It is when nuclear weapons prevent war, right? I do not see how love fits in. But it was too late to complain, so I just sat and listened to the tape of Miller's backing guitar and the professor's melody over and over again. I guess the melody is more Professor Galvez's creation than Miller's, but on the whole, I think it is actually a good song. First, it goes for your heart with a sorrowful opening, but then you feel revitalized as the song goes on. Miller grew up in post-war Japan. Maybe Quiet isn't there. Has that kind Did of you been moved somewhere? Long ago. You see any intel files lying around? Called Enka, I think? It sounded this way. But I wonder why it has to sound sad in the first place. Miller called it Love Deterrence. Doesn't that mean he had a love song in mind? All I see of Miller and women is the way he fools around with a lot of them at once. But maybe he has had his heart broken too. And what about me? I found myself thinking about Chico and Snake as well. I know Chico has a crush on me. So naturally he should come to mind. But why Snake? He saved me, and I feel indebted to him. But I thought that was all he meant to me. Why does my heart flutter when I think of him? It is embarrassing to be unable to control this emotion. There has to be a way to suppress it, to forget it. But maybe that is what love deterrence is? With that thought in mind, I went to my desk and began to write and write. Just three days left until peace day. There was something Skullface said. America is made up of many peoples, but those peoples never mix. Quite so. One nation, home to hundreds of different ethnic groups. 
many of whom stick to their respective living areas. Little colonies, not interacting with other groups. Going out of their way to avoid one another. Their land, organizations, relationships. Thus, the United States of America is no melting pot. It is more of a salad bowl. It is not made up from one people. But for its minorities to function in society, a common ground is needed. Language. Even if the country is not one, no. Because it's not one, Good the God. lingua franca is necessary. English. American hegemonism was born from the illusion that English could unite diverse ethnicities. In taking in people from around the globe, America became a microcosm of it. Now the boundaries between it and the rest of the world have become blurred. However different our neighbors may be, English enables us to create symbiotic relationships with each other. If English can bring unacquainted neighbors together in America, this should hold true for the world. This salad bowl that is the world can also become one. looking at things wrong. What do you mean? All of you. Until now, I had thought of your organization, Diamond Dogs, as a superorganism. Uh, you'll have to explain that one. The term refers to a unit of eusocial insects like ants or bees. While made up of many individuals, they behave as though they are one organism with the Queen as their nerve center. The closed ties you share here reminded me of that. Well, the boss's efforts do pull us all together. I was not finished. I'm speaking in terms of homogeneity. You come from all walks of life, do you not? Many races and tongues, talents and pasts, complementing each other, influencing each other making Diamond Dogs the unique group that it is. Of course. We have no use for mindless drones around here. Is that so? Then perhaps an organization like yours is a truer superorganism than the ants and bees. Meaning? Most organisms adapt to their environment by coexisting with other species. Take the cow, for instance. It's rumen. The first stomach contains an incredible number of bacteria which digest the food it has consumed. Without their help, the cow could not break down the fiber in grasses. The cow has to outsource its means of survival to them. You don't say. Man is the same. Some 100 trillion bacteria live inside the human intestines. Without the bacteria, they could not function properly. And it does not stop there. The stomach, the mouth, the skin. Even the placenta contains bacteria that coexist with us. The same is true of parasites. In fact, the human immune system has evolved based on parasites being a part of it. Without them, the immune system can run amok and even damage other parts of the body. This is all very interesting, but what does it have to do with diamond dogs? A harmonious superorganism is made up not of a group of homogeneous individuals, 
but of diverse individuals that complement each other. That is what I saw in your group here. Then it occurred to me that man is a superorganism. Man's phenotype is not determined solely by his genetics. Some say if you mapped the genomes of all bacteria in the human body, the result would be over 100 times bigger than the human genome. The sum of man's genome and those of the organisms he coexist with, call it a metagenome, creates the superorganism we know as a human being. Well, now that's quite a leap. You think so? Then try a broader perspective. If our world were a human body, you would be parasites. You make a living by doing the dirty work that the world powers cannot handle themselves. From their perspective, you are likely a nuisance. But without you, pus would build up around the world, and autotoxemia, self-poisoning, would follow. The world needs your kind. Thank goodness for that. Skullface forced me to turn parasites into weapons. Creatures with which we are supposed to coexist. Meanwhile, that foundation I worked with focused solely on the human genome. Apparently thinking that manipulating it would get them whatever new form they want. Both ways are mistakes. Neither is a true superorganism. I am Dine. Clown. By speaking Clown. with those living inside me, we enhance one another and enjoy harmonious growth. Such was the original purpose of my research. You have made me remember this. <laughs> well, it's an honor. You can travel the world, but you won't find another place like this. If the whole world was like this base, I think the peoples of the world would bid farewell to fighting for good. Maybe that's what the boss wanted in the end. Intel file obtained. Boss, we've gone over the prisoner transport log you found. Quiet was grabbed by the Soviets and moved to Lamar Hate Palace. She's being held at Lamar Hate Palace. Make your way there. They lost a lot of men to her. Can't blame them for wanting payback. Why did she just let herself get captured? I think it is time you knew. Quiet was carrying the vocal cord parasites. The English strain, to be precise. The third English pair, Skullface, was using her as a vector. An ace in the hole if his assassination plan failed. I knew it, but Quiet chose not to speak. She told me the situation in Dine, Navajo. The only language she to which the parasites do not react. If you found out, she could not remain among you. And yet, she refused the Obakia treatment. Why? Because part of her still wanted revenge against you. Revenge against the boss? In order to stay here, please select a drop point. Of eternal Supplies silence. requested. But then, that sudden mutation showed this was not enough. As long as the parasites were inside, supply her, drop complete. She could not predict what might happen. And that's why she took off, sacrificing herself to make sure the English strain died with her. Buddy, departing maybe. area or of maybe operations. Maybe she only wants to infect the world. Whatever her plan. We can't let her go free. The vocal cord parasites are the last of Skullface's legacy. It's up to us to erase it. Boss, the targets are quiet and the English strain she's carrying. Your objective is to extract her. But if worst comes to worst, 
She may have to be eliminated. Both her and the parasites. We don't know for sure what Quiet's up to, but we need to secure her ASAP. Please select She's being supplies held on requested. Palace. Make your way there. Boss, we've gone over the prisoner transport log you found. Quiet was grabbed by the Soviets and moved to Lamar Hate Palace. They lost a lot of men to her. Can't blame them for wanting payback. But why did she just let herself get captured? I think it is time you knew. Quiet was carrying vocal cord parasites. The English strain, to be precise. The third English pair, Skullface was using her as a vector, an ace in the hole if his assassination plan failed. I knew it, but Quiet chose not to speak. She told me the situation in Diné, Navajo, the only language to which the parasites do not react. If you found out, she could not remain among you. And yet, she refused the Volbachia treatment. Why? Because part of her still wanted revenge against you. Revenge against the boss? In order to stay here, she Please took a vow a drop point. of eternal Supplies silence. Requested. But then, that sudden mutation showed this was not enough. As long as the Supply parasites were complete. inside her, she could not predict what might happen. And that's why she took off, sacrificing herself to make sure the English strain died with her? Maybe. Or maybe she only wants to infect the world. Whatever her plan, we can't let her go free. The vocal cord parasites are the last of Skullface's legacy. It's up to us to erase it. Boss, the targets are quiet and the English strain she's carrying. Your objective is to extract her. But if worst comes to worst, she may have to be eliminated. Both her and the parasites. We don't know for sure what Quiet's up to, but we need to secure her ASAP. She's being held at Lamar Hate Palace. Make your way there. I have no doubt Skullface's plan is almost complete. At that point, I will no longer be of use to him. I must leave behind this record, at least. A record of how the ancient vocal cord parasites became these abominable ethnic cleansing parasites. I believe he has two purposes for the ethnic cleansing parasites. The first, as their name suggests, is ethnic cleansing. This conflict between East and West that envelops...
not even focus attention. Enemy dead ahead. Don't let them get close. They are already being eaten away by English. Business, education, film, commodities. English has permeated every area of global society. I can see this when I look at young Dene. Some of them have already lost their grasp of the Navajo language. It is said that over 2,000 languages of the world are facing extinction. This very moment, cultural concepts... You gonna extract him? ...are disappearing forever. The spread of electronic networks gives greater meaning to Englishization. Networks have no national borders. By basing them on a single language, they can penetrate deeper into and between people. Damn, there's more of them! Are you ready? You have enough ammo. Now is your chance to stock up. Give the order from your iDroid. But how does this differ from building the Tower of Babel? The ethnic cleansing parasites attempt to rob man of his words. Such irony. Enemy presence. It was the vocal cord parasite that gave words to him. Enemy in front! Take him out! Man had no language. Unable to produce electric sounds due to the structure of the throat. He could communicate only through simple vocalizations and gestures. Then the vocal cord parasites infected his larynx. Man's transition to walking upright did not gift him solely with intel. Subject on board. Leave the rest to us. At the time, the vocal cord parasites never harmed man. They merely took a small measure of... Enemy inbound from the left. In fact, you could call it a symbiotic relationship. Some animal species use particular vocalizations... Hold up, boss. To you need to secure the area first. To ...produce songbirds, certain insects, and also the vocal cord parasites. The difference is that the parasites themselves did not produce sounds. Rather... He's coming too. Roger that. Man, ...do it for them. Once secure on the human host vocal cords, a male vocal cord parasite cause the host to produce a certain sound pattern. Something like a warble of a bird. Meanwhile, females parasitizing by the There's more coming! Need only wait. Upon hearing the sound pattern of an attractive mate, they would manipulate their host into making contact with the person it came from. The female traveled through his host's saliva to the other host's the vocal cords complete. where the male was waiting and the pair Subject on board. Leave the rest to us. Can you imagine how the female Enemy to your right! But it was probably the through smell. Smells traveled directly to the limbic system via the olfactory cilia in the nasal cavity. Glance using herself as a decoy to draw the enemy away from you. Boss, if you're gonna protect Quiet, you'll need to attract the enemy to you. Amorous. This kind of sexual selection naturally led to competition between the male parasites. Males that had their hosts produce sounds perceived by females as more attractive succeeded in copulating the producing offspring. Evolutionary traits caused by sexual selection are curious. The peacock's feathers. The mannequin's dead. The enemy's almost finished. You can do this, boss. Even with courtship behaviors that are not advantageous to survival, those individuals that are going to extract him produce offspring, and it escalates with each generation. The same was true of the vocal cord parasites. Courtship vocalization rhythms and intonations became more sophisticated. And in order for man to produce such sound... Airborne enemy approaching! Look out! ...by lowering the position of the larynx and developing resonating chambers. They enabled more complex pronunciations. But that was not all. 
the vocal cord parasites activated a transcription factor that would later control man's language ability. A protein that due to its appearance is called 4 kit box protein P2, or Fox P2. Activating this transcription factor led to the development of brain function capable of creating sophisticated frequency changes. This was the pinnacle of the vocal cord parasite's prosperity. However, this sophisticated pronunciation control was too useful for man to ignore. Once human sexual activity ceased to be only seasonal, and having lost pigment-based sexual characteristics, distinctive vocalizations became the most effective means for humans to attract mates as well. Combined with logic pathways hardwired into the brain, or universal grammar, it was not long before... Subject on board. Leave the rest to us. This was the birth of language. Luckily for man, it was around this time that a particular retrovirus was circulating. While not lethal, it infected not only... No sign of reinforcements. Almost done. It is presumed that this virus removed part of the parasite's DNA and reverse transcribed it into man's reproductive cells. It was a factor. Among the genes it transcribed were the ones responsible for the production of language. The vocal He's coming too. Roger that. Genes were written into the human genome. The parasites were no longer of any use to man now. Man could use his voice as he pleased when he pleased, hindering the parasites' courtship vocalizations. Having lost their opportunity to reproduce, the parasites died out, leaving behind only the transcribed genes. The vocal cord parasites were once in symbiosis with man. Its genes even became a part of his. Humans and parasites are extremely close. As such, it will be extremely difficult for man's immune system to eliminate the vocal cord parasites. Even cutting them out will be no simple matter. Quiet. Extraction. Awesome. Right. Copy. 
The boss is with me. AF? Wait, who is this? Identify yourself! There's no time! Hurry! Where are you? What is your location? No, you're moving away from us. Circle back to your 8 o'clock. Copy that. Guide me to your location. Proceed to your 10 o'clock. Understood. Come back towards your 1 o'clock. Copy. 1 o'clock. Shift slightly to your left. Now proceed straight. 1.5 miles. Slide right. A little more. Yes, there you go. One more mile. Strong winds approaching. Quick, adjust to your right. Left. A little left. Yes. Now hold your position and proceed straight. Half a mile to go. Peacock, I can see you. I have a visual. There you are, Ahab. Visual confirmed. Peacock, hurry. This way. You're... I didn't know you could be so talkative, Quiet. The boss is here. Hurry, Pequot. Please. Boss. Boss. I gave you an anti-venom. Where's Quiet? We've got to go. Let's go, boys. Mission info has been updated.
I did not choose to be quiet. I wanted to express my feelings to you. If only we shared a common tongue. Vengeance was what drove me to them. The only language left to me, revenge. But the words we shared, no, that was no language at all. That is why I chose the language of gratitude instead and go back to silence. I am quiet. I am the absence of words. You have the results of quiet scans? Yes. As I suspected, her entire body underwent parasite therapy. The parasites compensated for her burnt epidermis and provide her blood with oxygen through cutaneous respiration instead of pulmonary respiration. In addition, they replaced the digestive organs she lost and she receives carbohydrates through photosynthesis. Was Skullface responsible? There is no other possibility. Skullface ordered Quiet to assassinate Snake. Only she got set on fire instead when he woke up in that hospital. But then Skullface revived Quiet through his parasite therapy. At the same time infecting her with the English strain. That way, even if the assassination failed again, she could still kill all of us just by coming here. That was the third English mating pair. Correction. The first and only English pair to be carried by a person. So either because she wanted to get even with Snake, or because she was working for Skullface, Quiet approached Snake again. Though in the end, for whatever reason, she did not complete her objective. Some change of heart, perhaps. We won't hear it from her. I did not choose to be quiet. I wanted to express my feelings to you. If only we shared a common tongue. Vengeance was what drove me to them. The only language left to me. Revenge. But the words we shared... No, that was no language at all. That is why I chose the language of gratitude instead and go back to silence. I am quiet. I am the absence of words. <laughs> 